Tuhan. So first, this PC should send a package to point three, point four, to point five. But before they send this package, they should send the package to its gateway before determining that the destination IP address is not on its network segment. The package transmit from PC1. Actually, the source MAC address should be MAC1. The destination MAC address should be the default gateway MAC address, so should be the MAC2. And the source IP itself, the destination IP is the server, and because uh, this is sent by the host, so there will be no VLAN tag. Next, this package will arrive the switch. So the switch will look up the MAC address table to see for this MAC address to which outgoing interface they should forward. So by checking this MAC address table, they know that they should go from the 24. So they will send the package through this interface, and then they will arrive the switch to. And when they send out through this interface, actually because here the type of this interface is trunk, so they will not remove the tags. They will add the tag. In this interface, they will add the tag. And in this interface, it will not remove the tag. So the package in this link actually should be with a VLAN tag 10 on it. Okay. And these four domains keep the same as the package here. Okay. So that's the processing of switch one. They just by checking the MAC address table to forwarding it. And then let's look at what does the switch to. Actually, first, the switch to will check, will look at the packet. And because they find that the destination MAC address itself, so they will forward the packet to the routing module. And then at the routing module, they will check the routing table. Here you can see that in this routing table, for all the packets, the next hub should be this IP address. It means the next hub should be the interface, this interface of the router one. So all the packets will be forwarded to this hub, right? So uh, actually, just now that packet should also forward it to this interface. And uh, they should go through this outbound interface. VLAN interface 20. So that's, that, that is done by the router, um, module, routing module in this switch three, a uh, layer three switch. And then when they go out through this inter VLAN interface 30, it will go to the, uh, VLAN interface 30's module in the switch module. And then this VLAN interface 30 will check whether the packet can be transmitted out. So here you can see that the this is the outgoing packet. So first, the switch two will find the MAC address corresponding to this one, to this one, right, to the next hub. So they find the, uh, the MAC address is MAC3. So they will change the destination MAC to be MAC3 and the source MAC to be itself. And the source IP destination IP will keep the same, keep unchanged. And how about for VLAN tag? Let's analyze the process. So actually here, switch two, actually they have two modules, right? So here is the routing module. Here is the switch module. And in the routing module, they have three VLAN interface. And in this switch module, they have two interface. One is the trunk interface for both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And another is the access interface for VLAN 30, right? So here, actually, when the packet arrived to this VLAN 10, so this is VLAN 10, this is 20, this is 30, right? So the packet go from the trunk to this VLAN 10, actually they have the tag 10 here. And then go by going to this 
VLAN interface, they will remove the tag 10, and then they will send to the 30. And then when the 30 go into this interface, they will have the tag 30, right? But when but this is an access interface. So when the access interface transmit the packet out, actually the 30th tag has been removed. So there is no tag any longer, right? So here you can see that the VLAN tag actually has already been removed. But within this router, they will indicate which, um, which VLAN this packet should be forwarded to. See that the packet transmitted out from the switch to actually will have no VLAN tag and the source MAC address and destination MAC address has already been changed. Now let's look at uh, what does this router do. Actually in this router, first they need to check for the destination MAC address, where should the packet to be forwarded. And when they check its routing table, they find that uh, okay, so for this IP address, they should go from this interface to the internet. And then they will send out a packet out. And because here they will have this net, they will do the network address translation. So within this net, all the IP address actually is the interior IP address, the IP address in the intranet. But when it go out, the IP address should be translated into the public address. So you can see that the source IP actually has already been changed from the in internal IP to be the public IP, and the destination IP is still this one. Okay, so these are the things done by this router. So this router should first check the outgoing interface and then do the network address translation. So finally, this packet can be arrived to the server. Okay, so that's all for the uh, layer three communication method. Okay, so until now, we can summarize the content we talked in this lecture. Actually, in this lecture, we described three methods for implementing inter vlan communication. One is that we can go through the physical interface. By using this method, we need two physical interfaces in the router to connect with two separate interfaces in the switch. And then another one is we can communicate through sub-interfaces. So by using this method, we only need one interface, one physical interface. But logically, we will separate this physical interface into two sub-interfaces. And next one is the VLAN interface. So this VLAN interface actually is in the uh, layer 3 switch instead of the layer 3 router here. So we can only use the layer 3 switch to do the inter-VLAN communication by configure several VLAN interfaces connected with different VLANs. That's okay. Okay, so these are three different implementation methods. And we also elaborate the whole process of the layer 3 communication. We analyze for every device what they should do and how the packet header changes during the communication. Okay, so that's all for the content in this lecture. So finally, uh, let's do a comprehensive comparison between layer two and layer three interface. So until now, actually we have already learned layer two device, layer three device, layer two interface, layer three interface, and both of them actually forward the packet. However, they have several key differences. So let's analyze their fundamental difference. So first, for layer two interface, actually they only forward by checking the MAC address, right? So they will do uh, nothing to the IP address. So the IP address cannot be configured for layer two interface. They have no IP address, okay? But for layer three interface, for each router or for each layer uh, interface for the layer three device, they can be configured with an IP address. Only if they have an IP address, 
we can think of them as the layer three interface. Okay. And next one, the layer two interface doesn't have MAC address. So they just connect the interface with the PCs and routers, but the interface itself has no MAC address. But layer three interface itself will have a MAC address because this interface may become the destination MAC or source MAC of a packet. Okay. And next one, after the layer two interface receive the data frame, actually they will check for the MAC address table. They will check the corresponding relationship between the uh, MAC address and the outgoing interface. So they will only search the MAC address table. If it's matched, then they will forward through the corresponding interface. If no matching entry is found, the packet will be flooded out through all the outgoing interfaces. So these are the process, the operation mechanism of layer two interface. But however, for layer three interface, when they receive a data frame, if the MAC address of the data frame is the same as its local MAC address, this means the packet is for itself. And then it will decapsulate the data frame and look up the destination IP address in the routing table. So they will check first the IP address and second in the routing table. That's different from this one, okay? And if it is found, they will forward through the corresponding interface. But if no matching route is found, it will not flood it out. It will not broadcast it out. Instead, it will discard the package. So this is another difference between layer two interface. So here about the operation, actually there are three different points. One is that this one check MAC address table. This one check the routing table. Second, this one search for the MAC address. This one search for the IP address. Okay. And the third one, this one, if it, it is not found, it will broadcast, it will flooding. But for this one, if it doesn't found, there is an error, it will simply discard the packet. Okay. And next, let's look at the interface. So actually here, a physical interface on layer two switch actually is a typical layer two interface. The physical interface of most layer three switch actually can work on both layer two and layer three. Okay. Catch the interface on switch. Actually, for the layer two switch, all the interface is layer two interface. And for the layer three interface, by default, all the interface will be configured as the layer two interface. Although they can work on layer three, okay. By default, they work on the layer two. And for router, actually all the interface on the router is the layer three interface. And besides the physical layer three interface, actually we can have the logical layer three interface, which is the VLAN interface, which can be configured on the layer three switch. Okay. So, and also we can configure the sub interface. That's also the layer three interface. Okay. So both VLAN interface and sub interface are logical layer three interface. Okay. And finally, the layer two interface and layer three interface will divide the network into different domain. So for layer two interface, they can connect all the hosts and devices together. So uh, they will not divide the network into the isolated broadcasting domain. Instead, they will flood all the packets they received. But however, if the packet goes through a layer three interface, actually there has already been isolated. So layer three interface actually isolate the broadcast domain. The networks, so if we delete all the layer three interface or the layer three devices, then all the other connected network can be a broadcasting domain. So they will, the layer three interface actually will directly terminate the broadcasting. 
Okay, so they can prevent from the broadcasting storm all over the network. Okay, so that's all the comparison between layer two and layer three interface. They are very similar because they can both forward, but they have fundamental differences. You need to be very careful about it.